This is going to be a video tutorial on how to create two unequal columns using HTML and CSS. I'll be using VS Code in the Google Chrome web browser. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. This right here is what I'm going to create. I have two columns. They are unequal. One is 65% width and the other one is 35% width. And if I downsize my browser here, you can see the columns stack on top of each other. It gets down to a certain point. I have it set at, set at 800 pixels. For like a tablet or a cell phone, they'll stack on top of each other. And you get into larger screens. They go side by side. They are responsive. Let me jump over to my desktop here. Okay, I'm on my desktop now. I'm going to create a folder here. I'm going to right click go down to new up to folder and I'm just gonna call the folder test I'm gonna hit enter now I'm gonna double click on my folder to open it and inside of this folder I'm gonna create another folder and call it CSS I'm gonna right click down to new up to folder and I'm just gonna call it CSS all lowercase I'm gonna hit enter now I'm gonna jump over to VS Code here And I'm going to find that folder. I'm going to go up to File, Open Folder. I can name that folder Test. It's right there. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click Select Folder. So now I'm inside of that folder. Now I'm going to create my HTML and CSS file. I'm going to go up to File, down to New File. I'm going to create my HTML file here. Now I'm going to go back up to file to save this as an HTML file. Down to save as and I'm just going to call it index.html. And I'm going to click save. Now I'm going to create my HTML boilerplate here. I'm going to do an exclamation point and then you can either click on this wrench or hit the tab key either way. There's my boilerplate. Now I'm going to create my CSS file. I'm going to go up to File, down to New File. Now I'm going to save this as a CSS file. I'm going to go back up to File, down to Save As, and I'm going to double click on this CSS folder because I want to put it inside of that folder. Now I'm inside of the CSS folder. I'm going to name this style.css. Style.css. I'm going to hit save. Now I'm going to connect my HTML file with my CSS file. I'm going to click back on my HTML file. I'm going to put my cursor right above the title tags. At the very end of that line right above the title tags. I'm going to hit enter to come down to that next line. And I'm going to type link. And then I'm going to click on the wrench that says link colon CSS. Now the only thing I need to do, this is the name of my file, style.css, but it's in a folder, so I need to direct the browser at which folder it's in. I'm going to put my, my cursor in front of the S on style and type the name of my folder, css forward slash style.css. And to make sure that this is correct, I'll put my cursor over that style.css and then I'll click on the follow link and it takes me to my CSS file so it is connected I'm gonna go up to file down to save all because I want to save both files save all now I'm gonna close my sidebar over here you don't need to do this but I'm gonna close my sidebar just so it's a little easier to see I'm gonna click on this Explorer icon up here close that sidebar I'm gonna click on my HTML file. I'm going to put my cursor between the opening and closing body tags and I'm going to create a div called uh, with a class of both rows. I'll click create my div. I'm going to hit enter to separate my opening and closing divs and then I'll put my cursor on the opening tag right after the V. I'll make a space and then I'll call a class class equals double quotations and I'm going to call this both rows both slash rows I'm 
I'm going to put my cursor after the opening div tag. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to create another div. I'm going to hit enter to separate the opening and closing divs. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put my cursor right after the V on that div, opening tag of that div. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to create a class. Class equals double quotations. And I'm going to call this column space left side. Left dash side. Now I'm, I'm going to add a background color too. I'm going to put my cursor right after that last double quotations and I'm going to add a background color to this too just so you can see what's going on with it. I'm going to put style equals double quotations background color background dash color colon And I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this a light sky blue. Now I'm going to put my cursor at the end of that opening div tag. I'm going to hit Enter to come down to the next line, and I'm going to create an H1 here. And in that H1, I'm going to call it. I'm just going to write. I'm going to write column one. Now I'm going to put my cursor after that closing H1 tag. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to make an H3 and I'm going to type lorem 25. I want 25 words of lorem ipsum text. Now I'm going to click on this wrench here which says lorem 25. Now I have 25 words of lorem ipsum text. Now to make things easy I'm going to copy this uh, column left side div. You don't want to go all the way down to the last div. I'm going to copy that right there. I'm going to put my cursor at the end of that div there. I'm going to hit enter twice. I'm going to scroll up a tiny bit so you can see. And then I'm going to paste this here. So now I have the same thing here pasted, but I'm going to change it. I'm going to change the background color here. To a light, I'll make it light coral, just so you can see what's going on with it. And I'm going to change the column class to instead of left side to right side. And I'm going to change this H1 here. Instead of column one, I'm going to make it column two. And then this lorem ipsum text, I'm going to start at the very end of that text. And I'm going to go all the way up to the word lorem. I'm going to hit backspace. And instead of being 25 words of lorem ipsum text, I'm going to make 100. Lorem 100. Then I'll click on the wrench here, lorem 100. Now I have 100 words of lorem ipsum text. Now I'm going to save this and I'll go over to the browser to see what I have so far. I don't have any styling done yet, so it's not going to look right. But let me see what I have so far. I'm going to go down to my folder. I'm going to double click on this index.html. And that's what I have so far. And this right here is what we're actually going for. But that this is going to be done in the CSS. Let me jump back over to VS Code. Okay, I'm back in VS Code now. And I'm going to click on my style.css file. And I'm going to start off by calling all of the elements in this area. I'm going to make a star, space, my curly brackets. I'm going to hit enter to separate my curly brackets. And I'm going to make this box sizing border box. Box sizing border box. I'm going to put my cursor after the end of the last curly bracket. I'm going to hit enter. And now I'm going to call my column class. I'm going to hit a space. Then my curly brackets. I'm going to hit enter. And I want this to float left. Float colon left semicolon. 
I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to give this some padding maybe 12 pixels of padding padding colon 12 pixels semicolon I'm going to hit enter again and I'm going to give this a minimum height of 350 pixels minimum height colon space 350 pixels semicolon now I'm going to put my cursor at the end of the last curly bracket I'm going to hit enter twice and I'm going to call my left side class period left dash side my curly brackets enter to separate them and I'm going to give that left side column a width of 35 percent width colon 35 percent semicolon now I'm going to put my cursor at the end of that last curly bracket I'm going to hit enter twice and I'm going to call the right side column period right side my curly brackets I'm going to hit enter to separate them I'm going to scroll up a tiny bit so it's easier to see and I'm going to give this a width of 65%. You can make them any width, but you just want them to be come out to 100%. Width colon 65% semicolon. You can make this bottom, this right side one 80% and the left side one 20% or the left side one 80% and the right side one 20%. You just want to make sure it comes out to 100 now I'm going to put my cursor at the end of that last curly bracket. I'm going to hit enter twice. And now I want to make sure this is going to clear the floats. I'm going to call the both rows class. Both dash rows semicolon after. Then I'm going to make my curly brackets. I'm going to hit enter to separate the curly brackets. I'm going to do content colon, space, and then just some uh, double quotations. I'm going to put my semicolon at the end. I'm going to hit enter. I want this to display table. Display, colon, table, semicolon. I'm going to hit enter again. And I want this to clear both. Clear, colon, both semicolon. Now the only thing needed to be added is just the media query, but I'm going to see what we have so far. I'm going to go up to file, down to save all, and I'm going to jump back over to my web page here. I'm going to refresh, and there we go. The only thing I need to add now is the media query, and the media query is good for if you're viewing with smaller screens. The media query is what will make the uh, elements stack on top of each other. Like when I downsize this, see you probably don't want that there. What I'm going to do is what I got on this first one here. When I downsize this, it stacks on top of each other for like a cell phone screen or a tablet screen it stacks on top of each other and you get to the bigger screens then it jumps to uh, side by side let me jump back over to VS Code and take care of the media query okay I'm gonna put my cursor at the end of the last curly bracket here I'm gonna scroll up a little I'm gonna hit enter twice to go down I'm gonna do at media space screen and then I'll do some parentheses and in those parentheses I'll type max width max dash width colon space I'm gonna make it 800 pixels then I'll go outside of that last parentheses I'll hit a space then I'll make my curly brackets, I'll hit enter, and I want to call the column class. 
I'll make a space. I'll make some more parentheses, some more uh, curly brackets. I'll hit enter to separate them. And I'll do width colon space 100% semicolon. And what this will tell the browser is any screens that are under 800 pixels, the width of each column will go to 100%. Instead of one being 65% and one being 35%, under 800 pixels, it will go to a width of 100%, the full screen. I'll go up to File, down to Save, then I'll go back to my web page. And now when I downsize, the columns, when it gets to a certain point, the columns stack on top of each other. Kind of looks a lot better that way, and it's more friendly for cell phones or tablets. This would be a cell phone size. About here would be a tablet size. And you get to the bigger screen sizes, they'll go side by side. Instead of squishing the columns together when it gets down to smaller screens, it just stacks side by side. It's responsive, and I have my divs themselves set to be responsive. I like to go with that minimum height, because if you just go with regular height, I can show you what I'm talking about here. On this column class up here, I have minimum height 350 pixels. But if I went with just regular height, Minimum height makes it a little more responsive. If I went with just height, I'll go up to File and down to Save. Then you'll end up with the contents of your div spilling over. Let me refresh here. And I'll squeeze down. You can see right here the contents of my div. No matter if it's text or pictures, it's going to spill over. And it might be spilling over on top of your other elements. But if you go with that minimum height, let me go back over to VS Code here and I'll type back in minimum, minimum min dash height. I'll go up to file, down to save. I'll go back over to my web browser. You can see here it's spilling over, but when I hit refresh, now the div extends if it needs to. And that means it's not going to cover up any, anything under that. But that's how you make two responsive, unequal columns. Thanks for watching.